All right now um for this video i'm gonna show you why tesla dropped okay and maybe some of other um popular stocks outside as well all fully based on charts okay no numbers no reports no p ratios valuations blah blah all this nonsense okay so fully based on chart why did the price drop right so it's pretty clear here price took out this high here and then broke market structure heading towards the downside okay previously this fair value gap right here was used to send the price higher so when the price came back down you expect some form of support because at this level it's um what we call it the balanced price range okay right over here in the may 2022 so it went up some form of retracements and then after that gave up the ghost came back down again taking out the lows here and we have another fair value gap right here we trace back up to that and then lower into what into the sell stops here with a fair value gap right here okay so right now it's retracing back up so what do we have we have this breaker right here okay this breaker can be extended all the way to the high of this candle all right so can be like this okay as long as price does not go beyond this breaker it's bearish okay and Within the breaker, what do we have? We have the previous balance price range that was used to send the price higher. Right now, it came back up into this level here again, resistance, All right? So from here, price should find some reaction of this area to go lower. So where did it go to? This fair value gap right here. Okay, there's an inefficiency of delivery of price by the algorithm and price came back down repricing into that inefficiency okay so let's say if you're bullish on tesla okay what what's your entry point your entry point should be somewhere in discount so you use the fibs swing low to the current swing high 50 percent is right about here so if you are bullish you can place your long orders here or you can buy here, accumulate here, below 159. And the last line of defense would be this order block right here. Okay. You do not want to see this low taken out. Okay. So as long as this low is taken out, then your idea is invalidated. But because based on the current macro um, environment, whereby interest rates are high, equities, stocks are usually not going to perform well in this type of environment. So there's no reason to go long here, okay? Right, even if you're accumulating, you would want to wait for the environment to change, okay? You need, you need to know how to play with the game, okay? If the, if the rules of the games has been changed, then you need to adapt to it. So right now, since we have this break in structure right here, we're going to see if next week present us with a fair value gap right here. And if so, it could be a resistance, an entry point for shorts, lower. Okay. And below what are the targets we're looking for, we'll be looking for 84 and 67. Pretty clear. Okay. And we have a lower targets right here, like the gaps and all the inefficiencies that needs to be filled. Okay. So... That is a very simple explanation of why Tesla dropped. Pretty clear here. Okay. Um, you do not need all those reports or numbers or what sales um companies doing what not. All those are just distractions. All you need is charts. Okay. And furthermore, we're heading into seasonal tendencies whereby the equities are gonna be bearish, right? Usually in the second quarter of the year, bear, um, equities usually tend to be bearish into the summer months, okay? So 
this narrative right now, I mean, the chart right now fits um, perfectly into that seasonal tendency. So I'm not going to bet against that because um, it has a track, it has quite a good track record. Okay, so that's why Tesla dropped. Not because of, you know, the other people that are talking about it. So moving on to the next um, popular stock, right? We have the Alibaba Group. All right, similarly, same structure applies. Okay, we have the breaker here and we have inefficiencies above. Okay, note how Alibaba, okay, failed to take out the higher here and shifted lower, taking out the swings, I mean, the sell stops right here. Okay, so by this definition, you're looking for this order block to hold. Okay. So let me just draw a line across. You want this order block to hold, all right? So it should not trade below the swing low if it was bullish, all right? Because this order block was the one that takes out the sell stops, all right? You want to see some reaction of this order block. There's three um, levels that you want to take a look at, which would be the high, the open, and the midpoint. Of the order block okay it could overextend to this last order block right here which is not that uh not that optimal but um if it does then you want to see a strong reaction away from this order block right here okay if it takes out this low then we're definitely gonna come down to this equal lows down here and below that we have 35 that would be, I think, one standard deviation or a half of a standard deviation from the previous all-time highs. So um, with regards to how I get this number, maybe next time I would explain why um how how do you do it. So right here, let's say you're 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 bullish on Baba. Okay. Swing low to swing high 50%. So right here, you could have bought right here. Okay, you could have accumulated your positions right here, and then take some profits right here because as I've mentioned before, we are in a bearish um, environment for the equities. So you do not expect them to perform as what they have performed previously when by, whereby the interest rates were very low and almost close to zero. So you must factor that in, okay? Right, Um. let's move on to the monthly chart, right? As you can see, it's pretty clear here where the pivot point is right here. You can see this low. This was the order block that took out the liquidity right here. So as I've mentioned before, I would want to see a strong reaction of the order blocks that were significant on the weekly time frames. And if it does not react off that area, then I think we're going to continue lower. So what I want to see is something like this, a good reaction of this order block. Okay, time is fractal. So everything that's applied on the different time frames can be applied on other time frames as well. It works exactly the same. So, but at the same time, you must understand that higher time frames are parent to the smaller time frames. Okay, that makes sense. All right. So this was the kind of reaction that I want to see on a weekly time frame, but we did not get that. Okay, so right now we are closing inside that order block which is not a good sign, right? So this could be an entry point if you're a long-term investor, right? Or should I say a long-term position trader, okay? But anyways, if you're a long-term investor, quote unquote, you would want to buy here within this order block, the high, the open, and the mean, okay? And you do not want to see the low taken up, but because right here we have the lows relatively equal, what does this signal to the retails? It's support down here. So any any prices below 60 is a buy, right? But the thing is that usually this is where they put the stop losses. So market tends to drive through them. Why is that so? To trigger the stop losses, okay? So that the orders can be paired with smart money because um smart money, they play with 
very big amount of capital. So it's reasonable for them. It's logical for them to one, take out those orders to trigger a sell so that they can buy and they can they can pay up their buy orders. Make sense? Because they can not, they can't enter a very huge position on let's say trading day, for example. Okay, there's no way, let's say for example, you want to buy 10 billion um, worth of Baba. You could not buy it in one trading day because there's just not enough orders to fill you. Okay, so that's how that's how it always works in the markets. Okay, moving on to the next um next and last popular stock. Okay, so we have Meta right here. So Meta, pretty bullish right here. I think this sell stock, I mean this buy stops are next. Okay, we have this huge monthly order box down here. Any retracements into this order block? which is at the same time, it must be preferably be um, in the discount range. Okay, um, any retracements into here could be a buy if this high is not taken up yet. Okay, if it leaves this high and it comes back down, then I think that's a reasonable long. Okay, but if not, if it takes out this high here first, then I think we're probably gonna go lower. Okay, so meta it's a little bit mixed, all right. If you if you zoom it down to the lower time frames would be the weekly time frame. Okay, so we have the breaker here. Okay, if price is gonna come back down to this breaker, it could be a buy as well. But you do not want to see price trade beyond the breaker. That would invalidate the strength of the price going higher. Okay, um, why is it gonna take out this um swing high right here? Because above the swing high, what do we have? We have a huge inefficiency right here, which price usually tend to um tend to gravitate towards to to reprice that inefficiency. Okay, so if the price comes back down here. It's a good opportunity for a long, right? Your stops will be below the breaker, right? So because it is a this is an individual stock, um, accuracies are not that, um, not that expected. Okay, so as long as body closures are within this breaker, it's okay. You can wick through it, but you want to see body closure inside the breaker right here this bullish breaker, okay, before it takes out this high here. If it takes out this high first and then it comes back down, that is a low probability setup. Makes sense. So how high can you reach into? I'm looking at this breaker right here in premium. All right, so this was the swing low. Right, price took out this low here. This was the swing low that brought the high. Okay, so right now this has turned into a breaker block. So if you use the swing high, swing low, and you project out, it, this is one standard deviation. This is two, this is one and a half. So usually price tends to retrace or reverse in these points right here, all right? And using these points or these levels, you can look to the left, determine the liquidity pools, okay? So let's say that if you have like in equal lows right here, you're targeting at, right? If you're short last year, if you're targeting at this equal lows right here, you can look for the nearest standard deviation, which is right here. Okay, so that's how you that's how you get the the highs and the lows, all right. That's how you predict the highs and the lows. So same for Baba. That's how I did it. All right. Um. Let's just um. Let's just show it to you. Baba weekly time frame, swing high. To this swing low. Right. 
we have 2058. Okay. If you use this, swing low to swing high, because on the way up, it did not take out any swing lows. This was the last swing low then. Has taken out another swing low before reversing. So if I was to use this, then that's where I got it, 35. Okay. Right? This would be on the monthly time frame. Right here. The monthly time frame, 35. All right? So that's how I got it. I mean, that's how I got the number here. Okay, so that's it for this video right here. And if you find this interesting, um, find this helpful, do leave a like and maybe I can do more of this. But because on the individual stocks, I usually use the higher time frame, so it doesn't make sense for me to do it every day if I do it on the weekly chart and on the monthly chart. And why don't I do it on a daily chart? Because if you look at this, it's quite messy, isn't it? As compared to the weekly and the monthly, right? So that's why I don't usually do daily chart analysis on stocks. And since everyone is a long-term investor, that shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> so yeah, um, I'll see you guys on the next video then. And that's it.